and keep it clean man i got a little confession i gotta make because i remember while the season was still going for the baltimore ravens and they were just crushing everything just crushing everybody winning all them games and stuff they were on a roll toward the end of the season i remember when that um that Nicki minaj and Lil uzi vert song everybody when that song got hot and i remember the part in that song where she like about to get another vince Lum buddy and every time I would hear that part, man, I would get like hype inside because I was like, oh, yeah, Raven's about to get another Vince Lombardi. And yeah, well, y'all know how the rest of the season went. Anyway, um, breaking news. Arthur Millette, he has signed with the Baltimore Ravens. He re-signed with the Baltimore Ravens to a two-year deal. It's funny the timing of this because a lot of Ravens fans... <laughs> A lot of Ravens fans been like, EDC, where you at? People said that EDC went into hibernation uh, ever since the Derrick Henry signing. Because uh, we hadn't heard nothing about the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> we hadn't heard, like, nothing. Well, actually, he did release OBJ. Um, they reworked Ronnie Stanley's deal. Uh, they released Tyus Bowser. Um, but there were, like, some, some other little moves here and there. But, uh... It wasn't nothing crazy. It wasn't nothing crazy. And, and I, we know that EDC don't really go too crazy in free agency like that. But, like, there was, like, nothing going on. And I know Ravens fans, like, hey, Eric, like, where we at? What's going on? Especially when they kept seeing person after person after person after person leave the Baltimore Ravens. Like, even last night, Kevin Zeitler. He is officially not coming back to the Ravens anymore. He ended up signing with uh, the Lions, I believe, on a one-year deal worth a base salary of six mil, I believe. Um, but he's gone. So uh, I know a lot of Ravens fans have been wondering, like, hey, Eric, like, wh what are we doing with this offensive line? The Bengals just signed Trent Brown today. That would have been a nice little option. But there's still some options out there. But anyway, people have been wondering, Eric DaCosta, what's up, man? Like, wh what are you doing? A lot of Ravens fans are worried because I, I talked to some Ravens fans today. One of them was like, man, how can we go from the number one rushing team in the league to now three-fifths of our offensive line is gone? And they, like, officially, they ain't coming back. They, they that type of going, going to the point of no return. But, um, yeah, I guess, you see going to address that when he addresses it. Now, I know he, he got no choice but to address it. He got no choice but to figure it out. But anyway. Uh, Ravens fans been tripping out because nothing was shaking with the Ravens. Nothing was going on. So EDC said, you know what? Let, let me get him a little something. Let me get him a little something because this is a move where there are a lot of Ravens fans expected this one to happen. A lot of Ravens fans wanted Arthur Millette back. I think where a lot of Ravens fans really fell in love with Arthur Millette wasn't even his play during the regular season. I mean, he had some nice moments and whatnot. Um, but it was before the Ravens and Chiefs AFC Championship game. When Arthur Millette, when he stepped to all them Chiefs, and I think he was alone, as a matter of fact. But Arthur Millette was like, I ain't scared of y'all, I ain't backing down. I ain't worried about none of y'all Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, <laughs> should have been a little more worried, especially on that last play of the game that ended it. Ooh, that MVS, that catch that he made over Arthur Millette. But anyway, they didn't bring him back. Um, well, they, they couldn't leave him off the team because of that one play. Uh, but they brought him back because of a lot of the different plays that he made uh, throughout the year. Arthur Millette um, signed on late. Uh, I didn't know much about Arthur Millette, but I remember when the Baltimore Ravens first signed him, and, and I looked him up, and I looked up articles and stuff. I saw articles that just they talked about how great of a teammate he was uh, over in Pittsburgh and how he was a very, very strong voice um, in that locker room for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, cool. So we're going to see. I, I had heard that his, his play was up and down. And, but, I mean, at the cornerback position, it's, it ain't never – your play ain't never going to be all the way up. It ain't never going to be all the way down. Uh, but that's just, that's just how it goes. But as long as you make more plays than you miss, that's what matters most. So Arthur Millett, um, now he'll be with the Baltimore Ravens, um, and he'll be able to compete – for that slot cornerback spot. The reason I say compete, um, because while I think right now, starting out, he would be the favorite to get it, um, you've got Ardarius Washington, and you know the Baltimore Ravens really like Ardarius Washington. I mean, when they first signed him as an undrafted rookie free agent a couple of years ago, he had uh, the, the biggest signing bonus for an undrafted rookie free agent on the team. 
at that time. Um, and they've continued to keep him around. Even last year, he got hurt. They brought him back He's as an exclusive rights-free agent. So he'll be with the Baltimore Ravens this year. So I figured that he'll be in the mix. As long as he's healthy, he'll be in the mix uh, at slot cornerback at that competition. But Arthur Millette, veteran guy, um, I think last year, I want to say he was 30. Uh, I think he's 30 now. He's either 30 or 31. I think he's 30, though. But either way, um, last year he came on a little bit late, but he came on strong. Um, and great blitzer out of the slot. And with them signing Arthur Millette, um, you having that much more depth in the secondary, um, that definitely bodes well for your team, for for your secondary. Uh, right now, Baltimore Ravens corners, Leo, let me know if I get anybody wrong, if I miss anybody. Obviously, Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, Arthur Millette, Ardarius Washington, Jalen Armour Davis, uh, Pepe Williams, and I can't think of anybody else besides those guys. Um, so, and, and then when you think about that, I feel like the only locks to make the team, Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, Arthur Millette. I think those, oh, and, and Ardarius Washington. I think those are the only locks to make the Baltimore Ravens roster this year. Uh, Jalen Armour Davis and Pepe Williams, they got a big shot to make it, but I do not think that they are locks. Uh, you got to figure the Baltimore Ravens are going to draft the cornerback at some point. Uh, a lot of mock drafts have the Baltimore Ravens drafting the cornerback in the first round, and that would certainly be something, um, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see because we could easily say that, well, cornerback is not necessarily Baltimore Ravens top need. And I, I don't think it is. You get a healthy Marlon Humphrey. You got a Brandon Stevens who just went crazy last year. He was Baltimore Ravens best cornerback last year. And it wasn't by default because there could be a, a, an opportunity to where somebody could say, oh, it, it's just because ain't no, it's just because everybody else was sorry. It's just because everybody was hurt. And everybody else was sorry. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> Brandon Stevens was just really, really good last year. Like, last year was his season where he took off. He did his thing. He just went crazy with it. And I was like, oh. Then I saw a, a statistic today that talked about uh, Brandon Stevens. It said in two games, Brandon Stevens held Jamar Chase to, I believe it said, 43 yards. In two games, Jamar Chase, one of the best receivers in the league. Not just one of the best receivers on the Bengals or in the AFC North or in the AFC, but one of the best receivers in the game. Two games. No Marlon Humphrey, because Marlon Humphrey ain't playing neither one of those Bengals games. Because remember, the, the first Bengal game was in week two. Um, Marlon Humphrey didn't play because he missed the first four games. And then the second Bengals game was the Thursday night football game. Marlon Humphrey, he was on, on his way back from injury, but he wasn't back from injury yet because he had got hurt in the Chargers game, I believe. Uh, so he didn't come back for that Bengals game, that Thursday night. So he missed both Bengals games. So it was... Baltimore Ravens secondary without him all in Humphrey uh, against those guys. And Brandon Stevens, he held his own, man. He really did. So shout out to Brandon Stevens. But, again, uh, as far as the locks, uh, I don't feel like Jalen Armour Davis or um, Pepe Williams are locks. Uh, and it's just a matter of health. That's it. We know Jalen Armour Davis, he's been hurt a lot. Uh, Pepe Williams, he missed a big chunk, I really pretty much all of last year. I know he went out for a while. Then Harbaugh was like, oh, he'll probably be back in October. And then he came back, I think, to a practice, and then he ended up still missing the rest of the year, I believe. But anyway, um, they need more quality depth at the cornerback position. Because like we always talk about, like y'all already know, cornerback depth gets tested all the time, all the time with the Baltimore Ravens. Never fails, ever. Never fails. So um, I, w I hope this year is different, but – Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And they signed Arthur Millette to a two-year deal. A two-year deal. Now I'm sure all the guarantees are going to be in year one. And I'm sure there's going to be an out for the Baltimore Ravens in year two. Um, but we'll see. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. They probably signed him to a two-year deal to sort of spread it out just a little bit. Um, but that's, that's normally what they do. But that, that's fine. So I'm, I'm cool with this signing. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with this signing. I know most of y'all are too. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll see uh, how this impacts the draft. Again, it does allow them for more flexibility at, during the draft, so you don't got to be like, all right, we got to focus on need, 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 need. And you do need to focus on need, but 
now you can really because you know Ravens like doing best player available in the draft. It's not always about need for them there, but this allows you to really do more best player available. Uh, I know right now it's a lot of concerns amongst Ravens fans. We talked about the offensive line, John Simpson to the Jets, Morgan Moses to the Jets, Kevin Zeitler to the Lions. So Baltimore Ravens have openings at, uh, at left guard, uh, at right guard, and right tackle. Me, I do believe that the Baltimore Ravens are going to go with Ben Cleveland at right guard, at, at right tackle, and left guard. That, that's to be determined I know a lot of people have been talking about Andrew Voorhees uh, Who Baltimore Ravens drafted last year But he was obviously hurt He got hurt at either his pro day or his combine I think it was his pro day he got hurt I forgot where But he got hurt last year So he didn't play all at all last year So it was like a red shirt year So maybe they see what he's got But that would essentially be like having another rookie out there um, Daniel Filele is another option at right tackle I do not think the Baltimore Ravens will go down that route for him being their right tackle I think he'll be in the competition But I, I don't think that they're going to choose Daniel Filele to be their right tackle Hey, you never know though He may have, he may just blossom This year may be the year where he's like Oh no, I'm huge, I'm this giant But watch, I, 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 I could get bendy too with it I could block, I could protect I got Lamar Jackson back So we're going to see how that goes with the offensive line Um but yeah, Ravens, they, they, got, they got quite a bit of holes to fill uh, on this team right now. But they do have their, uh, their cornerstone players. They do have their main guys at most of the positions. But you still, you got to get that offensive line right. I know that's everybody's big concern right now, that offensive line. Because, I mean, hey, Lamar Jackson, the most important player on this team. And you want to do what you can do as best you can to protect the most important player on this team. So, Eric DeCosta going to get it. He gonna get it. Uh, I'm sure whatever plan they have in place, uh, they they got that plan in place and they got it figured out. Uh, there is a possibility that maybe some monkey riches have been thrown in their plans, but they they gonna get it done. Um, I know it may sound crazy to some people, like saying, "Oh no, I I trust Eric DaCosta. I I do. I actually do. I trust Eric DaCosta to get this thing done. I told y'all like last year, he earned my trust big time." Um, it is today is March 19th the season doesn't start until September so we still got another little, little less than six months away so about six months away so the roster is not going to be done by tomorrow it's not done today it won't even be done in a week two weeks three weeks four weeks five weeks we got a long ways to go uh, so again as a Ravens fan we get taught the lesson of patience every single day every single day see Baltimore Ravens they help you become better people. They help you become better, uh, better children. They help you become better parents. They help you become just better people overall because they teach you a lot about patience. So keep executing that patience. Keep executing uh, just that calmness because it's more on the way. It really is. You know that. Y'all know that already, but this old news to y'all. But anyway, team, keep it clean. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you turn your notifications on so you don't not miss not a single thing. Run them likes up. We got a little bit of a late night video right now because uh, earlier when this news dropped, uh, me and the family, we were out to dinner. So I guess that, that dinner ended up being a little EDC celebration. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, EDC. Okay, you gave us a little move. Okay, we see you, big dog. We see you, homie. But anyway, I love y'all. appreciate y'all. The support that y'all be showing to the channel, it, it means a whole lot. Let's get the 75,000 subscribers. Let's get that ASAP. And y'all keep this thing moving. I appreciate y'all. Hope y'all have a really, really good night or good morning whenever you're watching this. I love you.